Hey everyone, this is Derek with Orthopedic Physical Therapy Products, and thank you so much for joining us for this Next Level Content Education Series in collaboration with EIM Evidence in Motion. Uh, this month, I'm really excited because we're going to focus on the topic of occupational therapy, and we've got uh, Katherine Richardson from EIM with us, who's going to guide us through the discussion. And uh, if you're an OT or considering the OT profession, this is going to be great for you. But also, if you're, you know, a practicing PT or um, chiropractor, athletic trainer, I think, you know, any more clinical um, individual would really appreciate the discussion we're going to have and pull some really great things out of it. So um, as always, the intent here is to help you, the clinician, take your uh, quality of patient care and your education to the next level. So we're going to jump right in here with this discussion. Catherine, thanks so much for joining us today. If we could just jump right in with you, giving us a real quick background on yourself. Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Derek. Thanks for having me. I People often want me to stop talking about OT, and yet here you are asking for it, so here you go. Um, a little bit about me, though. I work with Evidence in Motion. I'm part of their faculty um, experience team, and I work with the pain sciences, behavioral health, lifestyle medicine, uh, pelvic health, uh, lots of hats that I wear. Uh, in addition to that, I work as an outpatient uh, clinician in uh, Eagle River, Alaska, uh, where I work primarily with persons with CRPS. Uh, I've been practicing almost 20 years. I graduated from LSU, moved to Chicago, worked at um, Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago and their Center for Pain Studies and Center for Pain Management. Uh, and then I moved to Alaska in 2018 um, and then started working um, at my clinic here and then also started up with EIM and some of their programs. Perfect. Okay, well, yeah, thank you for the for the background. Let's just jump right in with the first question that we always like to ask our speakers here, which is if you could share um, one of the most profound stories you have where your, your your practice in OT significantly helped one of your patients. Yeah, and as I'm sure, you know, with other clinicians you've talked to, that's always such a hard one because there are so many, right, that keep us kind of moving forward in what we do and why we love it so much. If I had to hone in on one, and again, there's many, it would be when I first moved to Chicago and I was working at that Center for Pain Management and we were part of a large interdisciplinary team and it was very well resourced. We had everything, we had PT, OT, psych, biofeedback, Feldenkrais, like all you get is like a, a spa of a program, if you will. So it was very well resourced. So I have to say that working in tandem with those other professionals in the way that I did was a large part of these outcomes. Um, but the program itself is very intensive. It's four weeks long and the patients come every day, all day um, for that. So it's very much like taking a course. Um, so as you can imagine, when they come to us, they have um, a long history, a very complicated medical history around their pain. And it's a lot of untangling and peeling back the layers of the onion as they move through the program. But I had this one woman in specific uh, who came in and she really when you look at what her level of functioning was before she started down her pain journey um, she was very active she has kids she worked she traveled um, did all of the things and by the time we got her by the time i'm doing my evaluation on her she literally could not um, do the basic things on her by herself she needed assistance from her kids uh, with some of it her husband had to help her with dressing so really a huge shift uh, in her life and the first week in the program was very difficult uh, for her because she was um, kind of stuck on the used to codes, the things I can't do now to the level I want. And there was a big space in between there that we needed to sort of remediate and fill in. And so as often happens that first week or so, the patients get frustrated because they, they're setting goals, they wanna do the things and they're so far away from that. But as we moved through the program, we sort of reframed her thinking, we got her into the community. I got her out, you know, on public transit, went to her house to see how it was set up, did all the things. And literally by the end of the four weeks, she of course was doing her own self-care independently. She was no longer fearful um, of operating at a higher level, going out into the community, doing things like that. And when we do our discharge at the end, it's the entire team there with the patient and their love, their loved ones, like their family. And she was just crying, you know, about getting her life back and that sort of thing. But what really touched me was as she went around the table and was talking and she was talking to me directly and really to the OT department, she said, I had no idea what you were. When I started this program, I thought, I don't need a job. Um, and then I explained, of course, what OT was. But she's like, I wish I would have known you existed um, 10 years ago. 
she's like this you brought everything together made it make sense for me and of course she's crying the whole time so i'm crying <laughs> but yeah i'd say that was super impactful especially fresh out of school yeah oh my gosh that would really make you fall in love with your job huh <laughs> oh yeah i mean yeah that's, very that's, important yeah awesome yeah well that's wonderful thank you so so then let's even take it back a little bit before that what inspired or led you into the ot profession you know that's a, a good question because as you probably know ot is not one of the more known um healthcare professions and so you're rarely going to find a five-year-old that says i want to be an ot when i grow up because a lot of adults don't know what ot is um but if i think about aspects of myself and things that interested me early on um and i had this very odd interest in um, wondering what it was like to be other people. So I remember um, I was raised Catholic, we'd sit in mass and I'd look around and everybody just sitting there is this how I passed the time because I got bored easily. And I would imagine what it felt like to sit there, see the church from their perspective. But then I would take it a step further and be like, what is it like to, to walk in their shoes? What, when they go home, what do they do? What does their life look like? And so just this curiosity and this infinite number of perspectives on how to approach the world. And so flash forward as I was, you know, in graduate or undergraduate and I was leaning towards psychology. I went, uh, was looking at neuropsych, um, but I found that everywhere I looked, whether it was neuropsych and I did shadow PT and other professions um, that I felt claustrophobic. I think that's the only way I can describe it because it, yes, it checks some boxes of what interests me. Um, you know, as far as helping people, all that, but there were so many other things that I wanted also, um, which was working with somebody physically, touching them, right? Science, neuroscience, being able to stay in that world, but it was underlying all that was really needing to help um, and the possibility of being able to step into somebody else's life, see the landscape of their life, and then be able to help them and be able to geek out on all the other areas that I love. So. Um, once I understood truly what OT was, it was a no brainer for me. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And so just for the people, cause I run into surprisingly to a lot of, a lot of PTs and a lot of other clinicians who don't even really know how to distinguish OT from PT. Like, how would you do that? Because it is a much yeah. different profession. And I even notice a complete mm -hmm. different, um, cl completely different approach, mm -hmm. um, to exercise prescription and things like that between the two professions. So if you could real quick, I think people would find a lot of value in distinguishing those those two specifically, PT and OT. Absolutely, and as a OT and my colleagues, we are, this is something we come across often. Um, I, I, we're one of the few professions where we start off the evaluation asking, do you know what OT is? Um, because a lot of people don't, and they do, you know, there is that idea that, oh, we're PTs for the upper body, right? We hear that all the time. Um, or you help my kid with handwriting, or you work with um, kids with autism. You know, so what we look like across domains is so vastly different that it makes sense that certain people are, get confused about what we do. Um, when I try to describe it to my patients or to other colleagues, I mean, I the program I was in in LSU, we stayed, we were with PTs for the first year. And we had very good understanding of all the other professions in allied health. So this was kind of new to me when I got out of school and was practicing. So I'm like, what do you mean we don't know what we do? But anyway, the way I kind of describe it is if you're looking at what the end game is, right? So if you're looking at what are your goals and you're setting goals, that sort of thing. For From an OT perspective, it is strictly function-based, meaning it's however you end up completing that task, we're going to help you do even if you still have um, you know, some pathoanatomy, if you have body function issues, um, if somebody comes to us when, and they have a physical issue, but it's of low value to, of them, you know, to them to fix it, okay, but you still can't do the thing, so now what? So we work with modifying the environment, we work on, um, we do behavioral health um, things as well to help them deal with transitioning into new identities, new roles, um, all of that, we modify the task. Um, so. From a therapy perspective, um, for the PTs and OTs out there listening, and this will be very familiar for them, is if you're looking at this ICF model, you know, of disability, with the OT approach is very top down. So we look at participation, global functions, and a lot of the other ones are bottom up. So meaning they get the referral, they have a body function issue, and then they follow that path and see how it leads to their end functional goal. 
we start with that functional goal and we trickle down. And sometimes it doesn't really involve as much of the, <laughs> the body function as we think it does. That's not the real barrier um, to them returning uh, to what they want. So um, that is the, kind of the most global way, I think, to describe that distinction. I mean, as you probably know, PTs and OTs, we were born out of the same thing. We were born out of reconstruction aids. We're like twins separated at birth, right? Um, just one PT went one direction and OT went another. And so there is a lot of similarity there. And I can see where there is confusion, but yeah. 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 Both pro professions, obviously, completely necessary and valuable um, mm -hmm. depending on the person. So that's mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. So then um, with, you know, EIM and everything EIM kind of dives into in terms of education, how is integrating this? Because uh, you mentioned to me prior to, to getting on mm -hmm. the, the actual meeting here and the recording that yeah. um, you've dived into a lot of kind of subspecialties. So how has mm -hmm. in general EIM's, you know, education helped take your career to the next level? Your, your your education, your quality of patient care? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, again, a, another good question, because when I came across EIM, because EIM was not as well known in the OT space, um, and that's changing now. Uh, but when I first came across it, I had just moved to Alaska, and I wanted to get back into the pain space again. I'd been working in PEDS for a little bit in Chicago and wanted to circle back to kind of my passion. Um, but understanding that I'd been out of the game for a little bit, and the landscape of pain changes very, very quickly. So I um, I actually attended a, a it was, I was actually at the P, the um, APTA meeting as probably the only OT there, but there was um, somebody with the pain faculty at EIM, um, Steve Schmidt, who was talking about a pain neuroscience. I was like, oh, this is such a great class. And then he mentioned that there was a program. And I was like, why? Because back in the day, I mean, there were, I mean, it's like 20 years ago I was practicing. Um, they, there was nothing like this. There were no pain certifications. And even as far as I know right now, there really are not a whole lot. Um, but as somebody who'd been practicing in pain for so long, it was so necessary. I mean, if any of us would have had this back when I first started, it, it would have been a game changer, a complete game changer. So I ended up um, enrolling in the therapeutic pain specialist program. It was um, six months. And if I'm being honest and very vulnerable, there was so much that I didn't know that I thought I did. I've been practicing a long time and I was like, wow, I didn't know that. And I probably should have. Um, but also it helped me to round out some of those skills that I hadn't been in touch with for a while. Some of the hands-on skills um, where other areas I had more strength. So it really kind of balanced me out in that way and made me feel really competent um, again in treating that population. And in fact, I I loved it so much that I went on and completed the the fellowship in pain sciences, which was such an awesome experience. I just I just love that. It was probably the best two years of my life. And yes. and that therapeutic pain specialist um, certification that's not only for for OTs, right? That's that's no. open to. Yeah, can you speak yeah. to that real quick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that um, yeah, I should have mentioned. I mean, that was one of the big draws. Um, for me, for the program is because the, it is truly, I mean, truly in its purest sense, interdisciplinary. Um, it's not like a, when a, a course where it's like, yeah, it's for one group, say PTs, but okay, OTs, you can come along too. It truly is designed as an interdisciplinary learning space. And as we know, that is the gold standard in treating pain is to have an uh, you know, inner D team that speaks the same language. So within any cohort, you could have a psychologist, you get PT, MDs, you could have PAs, nurses. And I love that because you get all these different perspectives that, and you know, I love different perspectives. So um, it really was a huge benefit, I think, to my patients because I could start to expand my view a little bit and have a better understanding of what some of my colleagues were working toward and what we were working toward together, so. Yeah. So regardless of the type of clinician participating, can you walk us through what it might be like to participate in that certification? Yeah, sure. Um, the first course, and there are some of the courses can be taken as standalone, so just as continuing ed um, or in the program. Um, the first main course is um, it's a six week online faculty led course, which really I find to be a game changer for a lot of people, whether they're there for CE or whether they're as part of a program. And in fact, it's such a 
core course that's involved in many of our other programs. It's a it's a, a part of the pelvic health program, the hand program, everything, because it's so foundational and important. Um, and what I find is that launching out of that class, we have some people who join the TPS after taking that class. They're like, this was awesome, I want more. Um, but after that, um, you, basically you move forward as a, in a cohort model. So you're going through the program with other people. We have forums where you can sort of uh, talk about cases with one another, but then we also have some self-directed um, online courses. The whole thing can be done online, which is very attractive, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so we have those courses. We have uh, more faculty-led courses. We have some weekend intensives um, where we talk um, about things like greater motor imagery, or we're talking about manual therapy of the nervous system. So you get some of those really good hands-on um, courses. And the bigger aspect of this is that really rounding out how do you treat a person with pain. So those clinical skills that we we need, you know, you can't just take a course and then go to your clinic and not have that connection. Um, and this program does that, and it just builds so much competence. And I find also that um, providers, um, if they're aware of these programs, they request people. Um, who are pain specialists, and so we're starting to see more of that. That that is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think you did a really good job of, of establishing the, the value of of the course, regardless of of mm -hmm. PT OT. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Incredibly valuable, and you know, your one of your colleagues, Adrian Lowe, also does a great job of that of, right. of explaining the, the value of it. For those of you who haven't watched our episode with Adrian, Next Level, definitely check that mm -hmm. out. If if the certification other pain science courses are of interest to you through EIM. But um, well, thank you so much for that, the insights, Catherine. That's really helpful. So uh, last question here for you then. Sure. This was more for um, everyone, whether or not you're a student or you're a, a general clinician, but what's one key piece of advice that you would give to uh, to either an existing you know clinician or someone who's up and coming that mm -hmm. helped you um, as you've kind of you know progressed through your career? Yeah, I, so I think that I would almost see that as, you know, give, give two different responses based on whether you're a prospective OT student or whether you're already practicing. And I think that if somebody's considering OT, the biggest piece of advice I would have is really examine what are your interests and how is all that aligned with something that you want to go into? Because truly OT captures so much and it really, you can go in any sort of setting or any direction with it. Um, and then you can also expand into other areas. So if you find that you're still curious and want to learn more, you can shift gears and go to a different setting. And it's almost like starting a new career, a new path. So it really fills a lot of people's buckets with that, um, keeps them interested because, as you know, burnout is a huge issue uh, in the healthcare profession. So it really it helps with that. And I would say as somebody who's already practicing in OT, um, really I would say to dive deep into other things, be uncomfortable. We tend to end up working in settings where you become experts, which is great. Um, but in order for us, I think, to really serve our clients, um, we need to be uncomfortable and learn new things. We need to go into different settings. We need to really challenge ourselves. Um, and there's so much out there to fill in those gap areas for us. So we are rounded. Um, and I know that it's scary. Like once you get down a path and you're really, really good at the thing to deviate from that and be feel like a new grad again, the learning curve with things is daunting and scary. But I find that it really has helped shape me as a clinician to be resilient, to take on the new things. And so and I also I'm a lifelong learner. Right. So I'd love to take courses. I love programs. I, I would I love school. I'm one of those people that would probably stay in school forever. Um, but I do find that every time I branch into a new area, just with slightest amount of curiosity it opens so many doors for me um so that's what happened with the pain fellowship some people find that happens you know they feel less comfortable with mental health and so they'll go into a behavioral health certification or something like that but the idea is don't become too complacent in what you do um, because it affects patient care and there's so much happening so much new out there and it's important um for our patients really to stay on top of all of that so yeah stay curious and keep learning Love it. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, so much for joining us today. I think you, again, provide a lot of value and insight. Um, and I think we're going to we have a lot of people who agree with that. Um, I want to encourage everyone who's watching, if you're interested in learning more about the um, the Therapeutic Pain Specialist Certification or any other course offerings through Evidence and Motion, just check out their website. It's very easy to navigate and find what you're looking for there. 
Um, Catherine, is there any anything you'd like to leave us with before we sign off here? Um, I, I think that we've covered so much of it. I mean, you know, I could go on and on about OT and, and how awesome it is. Um, but I will say as an OT, when I arrived at EAM, it opened all these new doors I didn't know existed because it wasn't as well known in the OT space, um, which of course is now changing, but there was a lot of giddiness and excitement around that of what's actually out there. So, yeah. Perfect. Great. Well, yeah, thank you so much again. Um, and thank you everyone for sticking with us throughout this whole uh, Next Level episode. Uh, as always, check back next month for uh, another episode with another EIM faculty member. But we're going to sign off for now. I want to thank everyone again for, for joining OPTP and EIM today. And of course, Catherine and I. And uh, we'll talk to everyone and see you again soon. Thanks.